Hey, this is Notzer, and this is, once again, Project Cold War. This time, we're taking a look at Agent Adam. Adam is a unlock after 10 of the different missions, and I obviously will showcase how this tank is played, and um, that's it. That's all. Yeah, there's no abilities, there's no upgrades, there's no perks. Uh, every part of the tank actually has a work in progress stamped on it, so it's pretty much a work in progress. However, what is here, the overwhelming armor, the four tracks, and of course this really big gun, end up creating some tense defender tanking positions that, um, yeah, domination of course create great opportunities to be the tank for your team, so I'm just going to go in and have some fun with it. But yeah, there's there's literally nothing I can upgrade to. There's no point to leveling the tank. There's literally what you see is what you get. And this is probably the most like a World of Tanks tank in this game. It's all about your armor. It's all about what angle you approach and in what order. Now you do get the repair kit, which does give you a heal. And your frontman trait, when you block five rounds, you get like a heal over time and um, I believe faster reload on your gun. Your gun has a very high alpha and a very long reload, but there's nothing to enhance it further or change it in any way. It's all just down to how you play it. And how you play it is you take that big old armor and you shove it in everyone's face and uh, I actually have a really great game as I started to understand where the armor on this was the strongest. But, you know, early on, there are always weak areas of every tank. It's just how big is the weak area. For example, on Adam, the weak area is the seam between the upper hull and the lower hull chassis. Uh, there's a lot of enemies here. And uh, especially from below, if they fire from below, you can get in. And then, of course, side and rear, uh, just like every tank. But, uh, you know, one versus one, we're pretty good, but there's just nothing I can do here because we overplayed our hand there. But yeah, if, uh, you know, whenever they actually develop upgrades and perks and an identity further than just armor and a big gun, you know, Adam could be pretty cool. I see a lot of uh, nuclear symbols on Adam, and obviously Adam is called Adam. So I would guess there must be a nuclear reason for that. Maybe some nuclear flavor that uh, will be made apparent later on. I actually find this tank very fascinating. This tank actually was conceived of, as crazy as it sounds, so, not in this way, of course, but four tracks and this unique hull gun system. So the fact that it's in the game for players to have fun with and potentially upgrade and change the appearance, I think it's great. I really like these more exotic tanks, models that you don't really see, because let's be real, they don't make any sense to manufacture in real life. But in a video game, Hey, it's a unique character with a unique set of upgrades, and uh, won't you come and spend time and money to unlock? And, you know, the gun works really well. Really like the, the alpha that it has. It's really good at punishing, and obviously the armor does uh, work very well, too. I haven't really come across uh, a chopper in a one versus one, but I will later on. And you're going to see the tread advantage. So, yeah, whenever they introduce any changes or flavor to this tank, I'm, I'll be very interested to check it out uh, closer to release. You know, closed alpha, I'm sure they just conceived of it and they were working on, like, tweaking it. Maybe getting the armor and the gun down, but not necessarily everything else about it. We'll see. But, you know, it hits like a truck. And I think everyone likes that the chopper unit the agent he had a gun that was closer in damage to this one but had a much faster reload and, mm, so satisfying to fire a really big gun but this is very much like world of tanks you know this is not unique at all uh so that's one thing that might drive players away 
is it doesn't have a unique gun mechanic. It does have unique treads, so I will give it that. But it doesn't have a unique gun mechanic that would cause you to want to play it over another one. Um, and, you know, the more they take away from Chopper, the more Chopper looks like this, pretty much. You know, when it blocks four, it gets a gun reload bonus. It doesn't have quite the damage output on the alpha of the gun. But, you know, it can be effective. So, yeah, I'm sure the unique traits that they'll bring to this, hopefully nuclear-related. Any Fallout uh, references? Uh, I, I, would, I would have a lot of fun with that. I actually... Funny enough, I um, found a nuclear fallout shelter as part of an old church with my so, and it was quite fun to see the symbols and, uh, you know, think about why it was created and what that meant. So a lot of historical geeking out with stuff like that. So I just hope that they really nail this character and the nuclear side of it, if that is indeed what Adam is in reference to. I hope it is, because there's a lot of references to it. So yeah, we're just traveling to the domination. It, this is a single map, single focus capture, so very easy to point and shoot. And of course we ricochet off of the angle surface of that. I should not have fired there. I should have fired at the hull or something. But he's dead, we're alive. We get a crit on the engine of this enemy, so it knocks out his ability to maneuver. And while we're sustaining fire, I'm going to try and heal. Remember, you can heal through blocking. It's just when you take damage, the heal over time gets canceled. That's not how it works in World of Warships. In World of Warships, the heal works through damage, but not in the Project Cold War. And uh, we're taking a little bit of damage. He's doing a good job of actually focusing the weak part of my tank. And we want to get that final drive if we can and track him. Um, teammates are rotating around. Oh, no, no, that's an enemy. Please don't shoot me, Akira. And he's driving over. Oh, he almost rotated. He almost rolled. I don't think you can roll in this game. I feel like there's like a self-writing feature of it. It comes around. Oh, we just barely miss out on the kill there, of course. But teammate's able to finish him off. Thank for my teammate. Gun there. And we'll go in and capture. And it looks like we're going to win this one. Just have Jaeger pointing his gun at us. That's okay. Jaeger is not as threatening towards Adam as he is towards other more traditionally designed tanks. Just because there's very few weak points on this tank. Just in the nature of its conception. But... We win domination just before the Titan, and we're number one. I do think that the game rewards blocking a lot, and I like that. Uh, that does mean that you could conceive of a tank that is like Adam, that is very blocking, de dependent on maybe rolling into success. So, uh, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe, maybe it furthers. Yeah, you see the little nuclear symbol on the front? I, I just... It would be really really unfortunate if they completely ignored all of that reference to why it was this tank was conceived I could just easily imagine them making an ability around that and uh, you know it's a it's a tactical nuke or something small it's it's not going to be something that's like you know wipes out the map like Call of Duty but Something small and fun? Yeah, sure. Make it activate after set uh, conditions, or maybe it make it require all of your energy, and uh, you know it has a big build up or something. Just have fun with it. I think that's the one thing about Fallout that I really appreciate is with that sort of theme, you can get really morbid and really depressing really quickly. Uh, because, obviously, no one wants a nuclear fallout scenario. I'm glad nothing like that happened. But, you know, for a video game, yeah, sure, whatever. It's not real life. And uh, you can have some dark humor in that way. So, yeah, I think it's a good opportunity. Adam seems to play well as far as armor and guns. You know, I, I will showcase a better Adam game. 
Uh, but this is our second domination with Adam in the same scenario. Really love the stadium. I, I have to say, I could play this map type all day. Uh, just keep throwing stuff at it, trying to track him. Teammates able to follow up and get him, and we get our challenges. Uh, what do you guys think about the challenge mission structure in Project Cold War? If you played Halo Infinite, it's similar to that. Um, there was some controversy with Halo Infinite initially when it was introduced with the challenge. So is that something, you know, the random populating with uh, potentially agents that uh, you don't own? I think that's a way of encouraging players to continuously unlock. Um, so I think that the, the, the challenge missions not being for you always is deliberate. And I think that that, you know, you can basically, I'm sure they'll have some way for you to pay to change a challenge mission to work with your equipment or your agents or whatever. Do you find it annoying that you miss out on credits through challenges? You know, if, if I guess if the rewards were more extensive, like the bonus challenge would lead to whatever the hard currency is going to be called, that might be a little frustrating. Because then you would feel like, yeah, you don't need to re-roll the bonus challenge. You know, maybe the bonus challenge is a, a generic assist, long shot, uh, close range, whatever. But what if one of the three challenges leading up to the bonus challenge requires a very specific agent? Only one agent in the game has this ability, levels of requirement. Then you're getting into an annoying factor because you got to unlock that agent. Then you got to play that agent enough to fulfill the, the mission requirement in order to roll into the bonus mission that might be the actual mission that you actually want. I don't know. I'm theory, theorizing just because I played a lot of Halo Infinite, so I know what the reasons behind the mission's not giving you specific conditions that you have available to you right then and there. So, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. I just, it was a little aside, and we get, ooh, a nice ammo rack on that player. I don't want to move in, of course. I want my teammates also there. So, we get another defender. Okay. Can we get a finishing shot on a low health target? Ooh, another nice fuel tank, and, it, and it's a kill. That is our, an opportunity. We're gonna push in, and we're gonna push in. Ooh, I don't want him to escape. I'm gonna try and drive in, maybe cause him to track or whatever. And he gets double rammed. You know what they say about double ramming? Be careful. <laughs> uh, it's always fun to go with a friend. And so we ram this enemy attacker as he's attempting to maybe rotate around and I don't want him to get away and he's very afraid of my big gun. And I should time it better to drive around so my gun is in position right when it's reloaded. But he shows his track to us, which that's gonna suck for him because he's tracked now. You'll have to wait out as our gun reloads. Uh, friendly Akira, I guess, needs this more than me, so we're just gonna focus on the chopper. Take the target out. There is a lot of potential recovery if he was able to disengage and heal behind a corner, then come back 10 seconds later. Yeah, you don't wanna let the low health target run away. So once again, low health target. I get it, Adam is not optimal to finish off a low health target with his great big gun, but uh, oh, misplay right there. You see what I did? I rocked back and forth in that little uh, hillside and it threw my gun elevation too high so I couldn't actually aim at that little shorty. And if I would aimed at the little shorty, we would have gotten. But uh, you know, as it, as it stands, we did okay. We helped our team push into the cap and now we're gonna use all these dead carcasses to throw off. I was like, wait a minute, there's a guy right here. Get rotate around him force him to either show the turret, which is ammo, or the engine, which is for me. So I'm just over here happily as I can be. Just give me everything. Somehow he healed himself a ton, and I can't see his health because the smoke is obscuring it. Chopper's trying to rotate around us. I'm just trying to keep people focused and help my team because he is pushing in on my Jaeger. 
Definitely become more aware of how much I can contribute to a teammate in his his last struggle on this planet. Trying to blow up his ammo, but I think we missed the location just slightly too close to the turret. Teammate comes back, finishes him off, and we keep the Jaeger alive to fight again another day. And obviously I'm going to use my repair kit. It's about the only thing I can do in angle. Got the rocket launcher throwing all his rockets out. I, I, I expect there's a player close and nope, that's a dead carcass. Just barely have angle on this guy and miss out on the crit, but we do lots of damage on him and we're still defending the base. They need to come and contest and kill me and move me out and I just need to wear out the low health targets. I choose the small little shorty over the Jaeger. He has almost no health. You know, basically the size of the tank dictates how much hit points they potentially could have within reason. But we're able to finish off him and defend the base. And yeah, that went pretty well. Once again, Adam, pretty good. Even with no abilities, his armor and his gun played well in a defensive position can really excel. So third and final game. This time we are playing Conquest 10 versus 10, unlimited spawn. And it's on the ice map, so we got that radar dish that we're gonna play with, and uh, hopefully we have some fun. Now, you know, the four tread, I haven't noticed that it has like better traction on say for ice, for example. I, I haven't noticed that it's, um, you know, just so much better, no matter what type of environment it's driving on. Um, it might be there though, I just haven't, played the game enough to recognize that. But I have never been detracked. I've always been able to drive around. So yeah, there's something. So we're gonna follow our team. We're not the fastest tank, but we can get there. Just as reliable as everyone else. And uh, we all dive over this little embankment and multiple enemy bogeys headed over towards the radar dish. So, you know, I could continue towards the radar dish or I could head towards another. I decide let's go towards radar because there's not a lot in there and I need to give some hit points. And uh, we bump into Adam, of course, and we get a very fortunate shot coming from down. The Adam is really strong in a equal angle, but in the radar dish, he's actually weaker because of the, the elevated position that players can get. But we're able to capture the base we're taking fire from multiple positions. This is not good. I'm trying to reorient. I know for a fact that Akira, yeah, he cannot fire anymore. He's exhausted or overheated his gun. With the smoking, he was trying to finish us off. I will hopefully get some footage of Akira as well and share that with you all. But yeah, he's able to finish this off and uh, C point's gonna be contested. That's okay. We'll head back over there and continue the fight. So you can see the speed, the, the speed with boosting, not not that almost, what, 50 k uh, kilometers per hour? Let's see how close we get to 50. 51, 53, yeah, like 53, 54, maybe in a, maybe a downhill. <laughs> uh, but, you know, we're doing all right. Moving into position. I am aware of my teammates' position on the map, trying to work with them and push. A couple enemies are defending this area, and I fire and get some crew damage on this chopper, and it seems like he's coming this way. So the chopper is not going to be as strong against me as he thinks he can be, but he does have smoke, which I don't. So I'm trying to angle and be unpredictive so he cannot line up the perfect shot, of course. We really would want to track him. Get some track damage, but we don't track him. And we uh, were able to, oh, he's gonna try and track us. So it does look like it does affect our ability to maneuver. Must have really hurt. But we can still rotate rather well, I think. And it doesn't take very long. So able to reorient and I don't wanna shoot at the non uh, armor graphic. Yes, I could shoot at the final drive and would just blow it up. But if I can shoot at the final drive and penetrate into his engine, that would be idea, which we do there. And of course, Adam has to come ruin this one versus one. This is a great one versus one. So now we hopefully have teammates firing with us behind. I look for a shot. We don't get it. 
We get a block, which is great. We get a second block. I'm trying to throw off any of the seam shots that they're looking for. Want to finish off the chopper. Final drive. Thank you very much, corner pocket. Crit. We got to try and prevent the, the pin. We take it up the rear and then finally finish off. But Adam gets taken out as well. So Adam and chopper for an Adam. It's cool with me. I actually really enjoyed that engagement with the chopper. It was one of the few times where I feel like I got a one versus one in an unlimited spawn. It's probably the best scenario. Unlimited spawn, one versus one, because you can really have fun with that one person. And both of you can come back up and go do whatever else on the map. So it doesn't become this huge frustration where one player maybe feels gypped. Uh, you know, if someone else comes in, it, would, it wouldn't be as satisfying if it was a single life. So I like the one versus one in Conquest. I've always enjoyed Battlefield in that way because you can have these disagreements that are short-lived and they don't create, you know, hatred towards each other like you don't want to ever play. It's more like, um, you know, you're laughing about it and you hope to play on his team next time. So we do really good damage to this guy, but uh, we do miss out on the kill and I'm just trying to block as many shots as I can. The enemy, uh, Rakete, switches to his rockets. And uh, of course they're gonna do some chip damage, help try and damage the enemy Jaeger as he's retreating from C point. And now all that's left is this enemy. <laughs> Get him, don't let him run. Oh, we miss. Now our butt rams him for a little bit. Uh, and our gun turret cannot keep up. I'm just hoping someone else can fire on him because he's super low. Titan's looking right at him. Good. Armor is really good in this. Uh, punch. Punch is really good against us because of the nature of punch. Punch is like a short range artillery. Uh, so it can like lob a mortar at you and from the top you're very vulnerable. Because that's the part of the atom that isn't optimized for angling. Uh, they can only optimize for so many directions, so they they chose to forego air optimized. So anything coming from above is uh, going to be a problem potentially. But you know we're able to contest this guy. I don't know if he wants to come in or not. Uh, we're staying close so they can't see us. They have to drive over the lip of the ra the radar dish. Uh, they do end up act. Oh, this is actually preparing to clear the area. So I'm going to do some troll things here. I'm gonna try and track that guy. I'm gonna try and slow down this guy. We got 15 seconds left. Ram him, potentially get him to commit to us. Can we get another engine knocked out? Oh, we did. Oh, get out. Four, three, two, one. We dive out, everyone dies behind us. I wish I would have gotten kill credit for that. I think if you set up a play like that, you should be rewarded. We clearly, the intent was to track them all in the explosion, and that's exactly what ended up happening. But we only got a couple assists, ribbons, really? Hmm? So, headed over towards A, which is being captured by a shorty. And we get a nice engine crit. It's gonna cause him to consider his life. Just try to angle. Don't wanna look directly into his eyes until our gun's reloaded chooses to use his uh, rockets, which will still damage our armor, and then I'm going to push this uh, temporary cover, I think. Yeah, temporary cover, and we're taken out. <laughs> nice blitz, nice. But, you know, A is prevented from being captured, and I think our teammate's there, so maybe he can capture him. Yeah, Adam, I have had a, a swell time with this armor, and uh, I've never unlocked this tank in World of Tanks. So I don't know how it plays in that game. Uh, I do like the way it plays in this game, but I wish that there were more options and opportunities to customize the way you play and how it looks. I think they're, they're on the right path with the way that they have chosen to upgrade and customize the agents. So I just hope that Adam gets the same treatment. And I expect that Adam will, due to there's just so much work in progress, tags all over this tank, how could it not? And we finish off the Jaeger, but I was hoping to bust through so I could prevent the enemy from capturing C-Point and getting 300 C-Capture points. 
but of course we don't. And all my teammates are just piling up their corpses. But we catch the enemy defender. The er, what's his name? Erduluk? It's the Russian autoloader uh, defender with the, like, the attack chopper call. So where do these guys go? They drove so fast. Maybe they dry, drove around to use it. Catch sight of one, and the other one was actually behind cover trying to heal. I think they've done a great job with the radar point. I've seen some concept, which they shared with everyone, but some of the concept, it was a wide open radar, um, like a no man's land. And I could just imagine that being like, anyone playing in it are going to die. And then I saw this version, but without the big, like, uh, I guess, extra antenna amplifiers. And that seemed pretty good, but it didn't have quite the lip for uh, encouraging the play, and I don't think it rotated around. But yeah, what they've ultimately come up with is this radar dish arena, and I just think it's a great little arena. It's really fun. I could honestly play domination with that and have a blast, so. I don't regret playing Adam for this, because Adam does work well with those high traffic zones on these conquests. The stadium on the desert map, the radar dish obviously on the snow map. These are obvious areas and uh, bumping into Adam. Look at, look at the seam, very little I can damage. Uh, the back I can, but it did ricochet maybe because of the extreme angle. That's not my prize. My prize is C point, and uh, one of the things that you can do against an Adam player at this point is just bait him into a traditional tank duel. They will, they'll, they'll give up on it quickly. <laughs> but yeah, I tried to, I tried to bait him to get stuck out there. But I think we were able to get in and help my team just enough. So top on the team. Adam does pretty good. Armor and gun system, and yeah, a lot of blocked. Like the video if you enjoyed it. Please leave a comment what you think of the tank and the video, and uh, I hope you all have a wonderful day, and thanks for watching.